sponsored by Trading Academy. As always, I am your host, Josh Lilquis. In the last segment, we talked about reading price charts. It's a visual. It's it's how you get your information. Where you get your information is a, a platform. Once you understand how to read that price chart, that's where you put odds, probabilities in your favor, and make smart investing decisions. And then on the last segment, we had a lot of people texting in for these investing classes that we do right here at the Academy. If you did miss seats that, simply just text the word investing to the number 210 210 and that'll be for two seats one for you and one for a friend text investing to the number 210 210 or go straight to our landing page which would be investing and tradinglive.com and you can pick your own date there we have classes on the weekdays and on the weekends so l with our podcast that people have been listening to subscribing to it's been phenomenal we're trying to raise awareness to financial literacy or lack thereof in in actually the world so we're trying to make this the global number one podcast in the financial market so follow the podcast that's investing in trading live wherever you listen to your podcast apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and spotify so al as we mentioned on on the first segment market seen a nice rally on tuesday well that did continue into wednesday into thursday and we hit all-time highs when we're, and i'm right. talking about the s p 500 on friday so if we had a clapping thing, we were, we're let's let's do a little clap there. So markets just soaring right now, and what can stop it? And who knows if anything? Well, there's a, a few things that could stop it in the upcoming month or so, and we won't really talk about that. But I think we know what we're referring to. So that being said, what's interesting about that is you have some some bigger stocks that are not performing, especially on what happened on Friday. You look at the market hitting all-time highs, and I'm talking about the S&P 500, um, over 5,800, um, 812 or 11 or so on the, I'm looking at the SPX, that's the, the index. So the NASDAQ, that just a little shy of all-time highs, but very, very close, and the Dow actually also at all-time highs. So those are looking great right now. But you look at a few different stocks. You look at especially what happened with Tesla on right. on Friday. So Tesla down on Friday of seven, almost it was eight eight percent at one point. So it gaps down. And what was interesting, and it wasn't earnings. It was something about their their robo taxi event. It disappoints right. investors. So there was some news that came out there on on that. But you know, so these stocks are moving. Uh, the most today, and this was Friday, Tesla, Uber. So Tesla was down. Uber, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, BlackRock, Fastenal, Affirm, which is one of my favorites, and, and more. So that was the headlines from Dow Jones Newswire. It's just a news thing. But what is, what's happening there, Al, is it's bringing emotions to the public, whether it's fear or whether it's greed. You know, you look at some correlations with the markets. You look at the dollar. What's kind of interesting here, and this is something maybe we can discuss a little bit on this segment, Al, is you look at the dollar, that also has been shooting up about right off of, off that hundred dollar mark, up to one hundred two eighty eight. And my thought is, with this being an inversely correlated market with the with the markets, but they're actually correlated right now. Markets at all time highs, the dollar isn't, but it's it's soaring as well. So. Could that be some concern for investors moving forward? What do you think could happen with the dollar inverse correlation actually correlating? And what are some opportunities that we can use now? Yeah, what we're seeing things happen that, that used to, we used to be able to rely on certain things when we had an inverse relationship between something, you could rely on that. That ne- hasn't necessarily been the case. We saw that with gold in the stock market before. Uh, so the, the important thing is, is understanding how markets function, why they move when they move. And, you know, we see, like you mentioned Tesla, and we've talked for a long time about how these companies are, uh, the, the, the expectations for them is high. And any kind of a blip, when they miss something, they're going to get punished. Right now, we've got extremely high valuations. And there are a lot of things out there that are catalysts that could move this market. Uh, when the CPI report came out this week, the CPI report showed a little bit of increased inflation. The market got took a hit. It, it went down. The next day, the PPI came out, the producer price index. That came out showing maybe a little bit of a reduction in the wholesale prices, and the market went up. So we've got all these things that are impacting the market, but I, I think 
the problem is most people don't know how to take advantage of these things, and they don't understand how to really take advantage of what's what's important. Josh mentioned um, the reading a price chart. You know, and, and here's the bottom line. Just to, let's keep this simple. The the only important thing, really, if you want to be a successful trader, is knowing when an asset is going to go in your favor. In other words, what direction do you need it to go for you to benefit, and then how far is it going to go? That's the profit that you that you get. And you do that by learning how to read a price chart because what moves price most of the time when we see these big moves, it's institutional activity. The institutions kind of start the movement. They might start a trend. And then the public, because of their emotions, they jump in, oftentimes too late to really take advantage of it. So the important thing is identifying when that turning point is going to take place and then how far is the price going to go. That's reading a price chart. And, and those are the things that we teach our students when they come into these classes. Uh, a lot of people come in and they, the, one, the first thing they say is, well, you know, I've, I've been trading stocks, but my problem is I don't know when to get in, I don't know when to get out. And that's pretty important when you think about it because there's two exits to every trade. One is an exit if you're wrong, so you never have a big loss, and the other is an exit if you're right, so you maintain your full profit. But to be able to do that, to be able to be precise on both of those exit points you need to know how to read a, a price chart. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you this, Josh. Yeah. Let's just say that uh, you have been, right now, you just got a letter saying that you've been awarded an NFL franchise. Okay. With a stadium and everything. Okay. Okay? And you have to put together a team. Okay. And the first game is today. Oof -ta. How are you going to do? Uh, probably not very good. You can't put together a winning team. Tra team on the on the day of the tra of the game. So the point here is you have to be prepared, regardless of, of what's happened to you in the past. If you if you haven't done well, if you don't know what to do, if you've been afraid to be in the market. But what if I just hope things work out? Well, hoping and guessing happens to be a strategy that probably the majority of the public uses. That's why the majority of the public doesn't do well. Hoping okay. and guessing is not a strategy, and you don't have to do that. You you need to be. You need to have the education, the knowledge, and the skills to be precise on an entry point and an exit point. And that all comes down, again, like I said, to reading a price chart. Yeah, and I like that because I think, unfortunately, a lot of people just buy a stock and just hope it goes up. I like that example of a you know, franchise because, I mean, this is think about this for a second. People are risking their hard-earned money in the markets and just hoping things work out. Do you think it's advantageous to understand how the market works and then would it be beneficial to understand where to buy and where to sell and have proper capital management? And that's the things that we teach and train. And we introduce these concepts in these these power trading workshops I want to give away seats to on this, on this segment here where you can learn steps within a strategy. So you're no longer hoping in the market. You have a strategy. You have steps. brings more confidence in the financial markets. So... To come into one of these power trading workshops, simply just text the word investing to the number 210, 210, and that'll be, that'll be for two seats, one for you and a friend. When you do that, you're going to get a text right back, and it'll be a link to our landing page, and you can pick your own date there. So text the word investing to the number 210, 210, or go to investingandtradinglive.com, and you can pick your own seats there. Uh, there's also a video on investing and trading live.com that'll show you a few more things that you're going to learn and, and have more concepts on what's going to happen in that investing class or that power trading workshop just so you know ahead of time and some of the things that you can maybe bring some more questions we actually encourage that bring more questions with you so al with these opportunities with with stocks right now i mean it's it's an avenue it's a, it's a vehicle to utilize sure. um, especially for an income strategy now if you're looking at, I mean, we look at Tesla, it's down 7%. Some people are like, ooh, that's not a good thing. Well, that actually can be a good thing because the markets have multiple directions. Now, without getting into any detail, why is it so important? And we'll, we'll give the detail, we'll show the detail because it's hard to explain over the radio waves and podcasts here. But explain why it's so important to have a two way strategy for up markets, but also. For down markets. Yeah, the market doesn't just go in one direction. If it did, it would be easy. Everybody could make money. Everybody would be a multimillionaire, billionaire, but it doesn't. It goes up. It, it comes back down. And the problem is most people only know how to participate when it's going up. If you, if you think about the fact that it goes up, it goes down, and it goes sideways, that means that about 50% of the time it's up. 
And if you're not benefiting in the other directions, you know, you're either losing money or breaking even. I mean, think about it. If you can put the odds in your favor, if, if you have one out of three chances of being right or three out of three chances of being right, who do you think is going to do better? So that sounds a little better to me. Yeah, the three, three out, out of three. three. And, and that's the direction. The market gives you those directions. The great thing is that you can benefit in all three directions. You know, Josh Mitch just mentioned Tesla going down. There are a lot of people out there that are, are happy to see that because they know there's going to be another buying opportunity for them. Or they were shorting the market. Or they were shorting it. Or maybe they had an option. Uh, There's an option strategy that functions just like an insurance policy. So the people that had that option strategy on made money when Tesla went down and made it probably at a a multiple of the percent that Tesla actually went down. Yeah, and that kind of gives a little thought that you just kind of threw. You put a little birdie in my head, and I thought thought of something here as you were talking because... When people are getting into their trades or investments, what they say is, oh, I buy low and sell high. But if you just, say you just bought on, say, Thursday, for whatever reason, you thought it was low, right? Well, it went lower. So you're not really buying low and selling high. You're buying just and just with the hope to go up. So why is it so important, real quick here within about a minute... Why is it so important to understand how supply and demand works in the markets? Well, because that, that's going to show you how to determine when sellers are going to enter the market to stop the upward movement of something and, and cause a change in direction. And the same thing, if you can identify where the buyers are, basically we're looking at a supply and a demand zone. Look at a supply zone as being an area of sellers, demand zone as being an area of buyers. If you can identify those two areas. You, you can identify when turning points are going to take place, so you can take advantage of that movement. Again, I mentioned before, you have to know, you have to have a strategy that gives you the odds of being in a position when it's going to move in your direction, put the probabilities in your favor instead of guessing. Everybody knows that you're supposed to buy low and sell high. What in reality happens is the public does the, the opposite. They just buy high and then hold on and hope that it keeps going up. And then, for the most part, that ends up being a, uh, a disappointment because it doesn't, nothing always con- continues to go up. Even great companies that are in great shape at some point in time become overvalued, and then that's a point at which you can maybe look at a change in direction. Yeah, so I want to clarify a couple things because, you know, what we're talking about with markets at all time highs, people are probably thinking, well, you're wrong because markets are at all time highs. Well, you're missing out on opportunity and the opportunity is the big thing that you miss because in this bull market that we've been having, let's just say it's up 100%. There could be opportunities in up markets and down markets throughout that time frame where it could be up two, three, four, five, six, you know, thousands of percents based on the act on the volatility that is bringing you in up markets and down markets within that time frame. So it's hard to explain over the radio waves here in the podcast, but when you come into these investing classes, you will be able to illustrate how the opportunities that are potentially being missed. And that is where people understand, hey, I can utilize these markets. I have an opportunity to do things a little bit differently, but it's not different for anybody else. The institutions, that's what they're doing every single day. And these strategies we have access to as well. We can do the same type of strategies that the institutions are doing. The great thing is we can do it a lot easier because we can get in and out of our positions much easier. So we'll be able to illustrate this to you in these investing class or this power for trading workshops that we do right here at the academy. And these are two hour workshops. You know, Al teaches these, I teach these as well, um, where we bring the pull back the curtain on how the markets work and the opportunities that are there for you. So simply text the word investing to the number 210 210. That'll be for two seats for this power trading workshop. One for you and a friend. Text investing to the number 210 210 or go to investingandtradinglive.com and you can pick your own date there. So Al, great discussion on supply and demand and why that's so important. But with markets really at all time highs, We have a lot of people that have retirement accounts that I want to talk about next because it's so important now to have strategies for all-time highs to protect what you have, but also market could continue to go up, how to have opportunities no matter which direction this market goes. Stay tuned for that. This is Josh and Al, Investing and Trading Live. We will be right back.